Hi, I'm Arcio. And I'm Ross. And this is Bridge the Atlantic. Happy Halloween. Welcome to Bridge the Atlantic's 2017 Halloween special. <laughs> We're your terrifyingly awesome hosts, singer, songwriter, multi instrumentalist, filmmaker, and paranormal enthusiast. Mercy Novelli from Canada. I wear many hats, literally and figuratively. And I'm music web designer Ross Barber Smith from Scotland, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Electric Kiwi. I almost forgot to mention that when I'm not releasing music under my own name, I'm producing and mixing records for other artists. So if you would like to work together, just hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter as my name, Marcio Novelli. We are on Patreon and we've got lots of exciting stuff to share with you on there. You can support us from as little as a dollar per month and in exchange you get some patron-only exclusives. We recently upgraded some things over there, so uh, head on over and check it out. Yeah, perks include early access to content, shoutouts for your band or brand, as well as your chance to co-host the show alongside Ross and I. But most importantly, uh, your support directly allows us to keep bringing you weekly episodes and spreading knowledge throughout the land. The land. We've also got official BTA shirts available to purchase on our website. Mm -hmm. They look great on you, I've heard. And uh, all proceeds go into helping us keep the lights on here at Bridge the Atlantic. There's a link to them in our show notes. And if you use coupon code BTA Rocks, you'll receive 10% off your purchase. It's our little way of saying Gracias. thank you. <laughs> you had and to jump in there. I have to. And lastly, I'm wrapping up recording my second solo album, and you can pre-order it now at marcionovelli.com slash pre-order. Who would have thought, Ross? Who would have thought? thought? Not me. You get a ton of exclusives along with an immediate free download of my acoustic EP, The Reimagining Volume 1, as an added bonus. So make sure to check out my music on Spotify and stream it all day long, baby. <laughs> Are you regretting that you uh, committed what, yourself to saying that? What has gotten into me today? It's the no, Halloween vibe. I don't know it's what very it is. creepy, I'll tell you that much. It's creepy. That, that's, yeah. that's the Halloween vibe I'm going for today. Oh, creepy. good. Well, you're nailing it. So but no, it's not congrats. Halloween creepy, though, is it? It's, I, think, uh, I think I've chosen the wrong kind of creepy. Well, uh, no comment. Um, well, that was a comment, no comment, just so you know. That technically was a comment. Perhaps. Perhaps. So here we are, Marcio. Indubitably. Here. Here we are. Here we Our are. Our second ever Halloween special. Um, <sighs> if anyone remembers the first one, uh, Marcy and I do, for um, oh. various reasons, you'll notice um. that we're approaching things a little bit differently than we did last time. Yeah, so we launched this show as in Bridge Atlantic um, back in autumn 2014, and uh, we did our first special, which was a holiday special, um, just three months later. So it was a nightmare to edit because, well, maybe maybe you can let them know why, Roz. Yeah, I mean, when you combine you know, different time zones, internet issues, yeah. um, software issues, I, I, basically any kind of issue that you can imagine <laughs> My own issues. Happened. <laughs> Besides <laughs> the show. <laughs> yeah, so there's all that stuff. Uh, so we had four guests on the show yeah. at the same time. So six people, including us. Um, and... We already kind of had an inkling that technology wasn't our friend, but <laughs> it was really, really confirmed uh, when we tried to make that happen. Yeah, it was just a nightmare. Like, people kept cutting out. I think there was one part where one of our guests, uh, Dion, I think, was just, like, a frozen face for, like, half of the episode. We could still hear him. He was a wonderful frozen face. There were parts where we lost on uh, Andrew DeLeon. I don't know. Uh, craziness. Hilarious. Um, but uh, definitely very stressful. Um, three months into launching, about five months start of starting the show. So uh, naturally, we uh, we, <laughs> we decided um, a year later, um, hey, wouldn't it be great to do another special again? <laughs> sure, let's do a Halloween special this time because that'll change everything. Oh yeah, um, so yeah, that was uh, that was two years ago, back mm -hmm. in October. Funnily enough, Halloween uh, 2015, and uh, yeah, we we didn't learn our lesson. Yeah. Um, we. Uh, had four guests on the show again. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we had technology issues. Yeah. We had software issues. Yeah, the only we person, had Skype issues. The only person we could really hear the whole time was James Black, I believe. Um, poor Charlotte Erickson was just like, uh, we couldn't hear anything she was I know. Saying. I know, and I don't think she could even hear us no, either. So it was like she was so polite about it, but it's <laughs> I know. So it was another editing was, uh, nightmare. Yeah, it was another editing nightmare. It ended up being so much work that we actually skipped um, doing a Halloween special the, last year. Um, and ever since, we basically just pre-record clips uh, when we interview our guests to include in future specials, which has been working out a lot better. Because um, I mean, just scheduling all these people at once is a nightmare. Scheduling people yeah. for one interview is is crazy enough. Yeah. Um, but to get them all together, it just, you know, we're going to, I think we're, you know, I think we're going to reserve that for, for another thing that we'll talk about later. What does this mean, Ross? This means that you and I had to learn the hard way mm-hmm. as fucking always. As always. Um, I, I just wanted this to have an explicit warning, by the way. So there's a fucking, oh, okay. Uh, you well. and I are stubborn. <laughs> we're ambitious, but mostly stubborn. <laughs> yeah. We don't like to be beaten. No. You know, we want to, we want to we win. Don't. So we try and win. But yeah, anyways, having said that, you know, it's it is a bit sad though because it was so much fun to have all those guests on at once. Um, you know, it just there's just a, an excitement and a vibe and you know, pe- people getting to meet each other and all the different um energies and and personalities, you know, but luckily we have found another way around it uh to be able to do that. Yes. So we started doing BTA live this summer, which features Marcio and I live on Facebook and sometimes joined by previous guests of the show we are able to bring multiple people back and have some fun together without the pressure of editing afterwards because yeah it is live yeah i think people have less like people understand more if things go wrong if it's live i think so because stuff goes wrong all the time on live tv i mean how many tv shows are there that are like just basically compilations of when live tv goes wrong Um, all right well even saturday night live that's live i mean they, yeah, they stuff forget goes lines. Wrong. It's hilarious. That's what's funny about it. If that was pre-recorded, you'd be like, "Yeah, that doesn't work." Yeah. So you know, being able to bring people back onto BTA Live, and it's not a, not as much um, pressure for us to just interview people um, from the get, you know, from the beginning to the end. You know, it's more it's more relaxed. Hey, if you want to know more about this guest, go watch the interview. But here they are now. You know, we're going to talk about something specific or whatever. So you know, that's kind of. Um, it's kind of exciting for us, I think. If you are interested in joining us live on Facebook, we would love to see you. We are live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time or 5 p.m. UK Time for a good chat. And we're happy to answer any questions you want to throw our way. And that includes our guests as well. We did we did actually record a B-Sides episode because the question was so big. We couldn't answer it there and then. So we recorded a B-Sides episode, That's right. um, which will be coming out next month, uh, end of November. Absolutely. And we're doing a special Halloween-themed BTA Live on Halloween. Um, so depending on when you're tuning into this, uh, you can either join us live or watch a replay of it on our Facebook page. Yeah. And much like our Valentine and Christmas specials, we wanted to share some games that we've played with our guests in this episode. Yeah, so Two Truths and a Lie is always so much fun to play. Uh, we get to know our guests a little better and also get to find out if either of us are winners or losers. Um <laughs> Is there any gray area there, Russ? Can we be um, a, no, not it's really. really. Black I mean, and white? yeah. I mean, we love a little bit of friendly co-host competition, yeah. you know, with Ross or Marcio, winner, loser. Yeah, we love it. Know. As in, you love it because you always win. <laughs> no, but it was your idea. So I know it was. I know it's such a karma. It's such a karma hit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, with that said, uh, here's Michael Grubbs from Wakey Wakey playing a Halloween-themed Two Truths and a Lie with us. Hi, I'm Mike Grubbs, a.k.a. Wakey Wakey, and this is Two Truths and a Lie about Halloween. Um, So I'm going to tell you two things. That's my dog. (laughs) Buster, come here. Uh, So I'm going to tell you two things that I really dressed up as and one thing that I really didn't dress up as, not necessarily in that order, and you have to guess. Um, So one thing that I really did definitely really dress up as uh, was myself as a five-year-old boy. Another thing that I dressed up as was Bernie Sanders. Um, and uh, the third and most inter- <laughs> Buster, <laughs> my dog. Uh, the third and most interesting thing that I dressed up as was a Christian version of Superman. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. I need to tough. think up some follow up questions here. I'm avoiding my immediate. This one's it. <laughs> I'm avoiding that. Yeah. Uh, do you think that he oversold the first one, being a definitely, definitely doing? That I definitely, definitely mm. did this? I don't know. I mean, I am curious about, like, so see when you dressed up as a five-year-old version of yourself, mm-hmm. 
was there a particular photo that you were modeling this on? Like, did you recreate an outfit, for example? Mm. Am I supposed to answer these yeah, questions? Yeah, yeah, we're, yes, yeah. Please. Follow up is, okay. We're trying yeah. to do our detective um, work. Here. We're being detectives. <laughs> the, uh, I think the best way to describe my, um, my, sartir- my sartorial choices as a five-year-old, I was more of a uniform kid, if you know what I mean, where I wore pretty much the same thing every single day. Okay. So, yeah. Now, okay. when you did this, though, did you, like, put a side-by-side photo of yourself as a child? Like, who got it? This, the, the thing is, I, uh, it was one of those things where uh, I was going out for Halloween. I, I have a hat that I had had since I was five, a baseball cap that I bought when I was a kid that I still have. And I put, I realized that I was wearing the same shit that I used to wear when I was five when I was getting ready to go to this party. I was like, you know what would be funny? I'm going to put on this hat and I'm going to go and be like, I'm myself when I was five. And then people are going to be like, that's a lame fucking outfit. <laughs> and that's, and that's what happened. Okay. So I'm going to ask you about Bernie Sanders. Uh, what year did you dress up as Bernie Sanders? Um, that was this, uh, the, the past year. That was the most okay. recent it, one. It kind of have to be, I think. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. He wasn't really Trying on my radar right there, before that, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah <laughs> no when you were a kid okay. and what was your yeah. third one uh, the third? third one was a christian version of superman christian <laughs> what is a christian yeah. version of superman and that's a great question that's a great question but it's it's definitely a real one <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did not this... dress up as bernie sanders um yeah, you're hmm. right i did not dress up as oh, bernie sanders i, did, I got oh. it Ross, do you what want were you gonna do you pick? want to know the christian i know right. it's easy for me to say that what, what? <laughs> i was uh this is when i was a little kid and i was going to a costume contest at my church and i was dressed as my mom dressed me up as superman because he was like my favorite you know superhero at the time and then right when we were walking out the door my mom realized that it was supposed, you were supposed to have a Christian based costume. So she put a C next to the Superman thing and I was super Christian. (laughs) (laughs) That might be one of the lamest things I've ever heard. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm proud, like I'm proud of it to, I'm proud of that to a level where I'm speaking about it on a public, a very public forum right now. As an adult, I'm recalling that story and telling you guys about it. And I just want you guys to know that's the level of access that I, that I want to grant the world. Michael, thank you for playing Two Truths and a Lie with us. <laughs> uh, it was my pleasure. Damn it, Michael, you've exposed us for what we really are. <laughs> We're both losers. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I've learned okay to become with okay with that. Yeah, Wait, you I mean, I, with me being a loser or you being a loser? But, well, with both of us being losers, <laughs> you know. So, um, let's take a little detour for a second, Marcio. Okay. A detour. Oh. I mean, we need some kind of really creepy music in the background here, mm-hmm. possibly played on a theremin. Mm-hmm. Uh, a detour into an area that you are a fan of, Mr. Novelli, the paranormal. Yeah, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but uh, yes, I'm, I'm a bit of an anomaly, though, because I'm very science-based, you know, um, but I'm also very open-minded when it comes to the paranormal. I think just because I was raised with my mom <clears throat> being, <clears throat> excuse me, my mom and my family are very much uh, into that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, if that's anything I took from them, it's definitely that. I'm, I'm a total science nerd, but I think it's important to remember that science is a study and explanation of the physical world. You know what I mean? Um, and some would argue that that's not the only realm of existence. You know, uh, there are very, very well maybe um, endless realms of existence and uh, that we can never truly explain through conventional science. Um, even theoretical physicists, you know, will tell you that there are parallel worlds that may exist all around us at any given point in time. And, um, you know, and time itself is, is an illusion, you know. Um, by the way, I, I majored in philosophy. <laughs> In university, so you can you can understand that where I'm coming from. With I can never I can never truly believe or not believe anything, you know. And you can never 
Anyway, I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of a true Pisces. I don't, really, I don't definitely don't believe in astro- astrology, but um, you know, true Pisces there. Two fish swimming in different directions. I mean, so like I said, science is my jam, but I, you know, I'm also deeply fascinated by what we may never be able to understand. You know, I think that mystery really appeals to my Pisces imagination. But it's important to note that I'm equally skeptical of all things paranormal as I am uh, intrigued by it. Right. So anyways, having said that, I've had countless paranormal experiences in my life, and I'd like to share a couple of them with you now. As, as a teenager, uh, we used to play Ouija board a lot, right? Because, you know, and of course, it's a game. It's a game. I still would never want to touch a, a Ouija board. It's a game. You can buy it anywhere. However, this is the thing. This is the thing. Uh, and again, keep in mind, I, I, I'm, I, I, it's, my, my brain is very, very much works in a dichotomy form, right? So, um, you know, on one side, I'm like, it's just a game. But the other side, it's like you can make, it's just a form of communication um, with, you know, um, another form of existence. And you can use anything to communicate with that, right? So, anyways, we were out at a um, this place called Battlefield Park. Anyone who's from uh, Ontario or is particularly um, Hamilton, Stony Creek knows what I'm talking about. And this place definitely had, you know, crazy stuff go on years ago. Anyways, we were there at, at this park and uh, playing Ouija board. Turns out this 13 year old dead girl is infatuated with me. Okay. I swear to God. So we play, it keeps saying, talking to me, all this stuff. Um, and, anyways, you know, the, the night ends. We're done. Okay. So this is going to sound funny, but after we're done, I feel like there's like this thing following me. It's just, it feels weird. I know it's silly. It's just paranoia or whatever, but I feel like there's something following me. And I don't think much about that until I get home. And I just feel like I keep looking over my shoulder. And I'm not even thinking about it anymore. I just keep looking over my shoulder. Okay, so that night, you know, uh, I had a friend over actually. So another friend to, uh, to, uh, to, I can't think of the word right now, but that can, um, you know, uh, cooperate. Cooperate. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. The story. My wife, uh, uh, my wife goes to bed, lay down, and my my friend and I are are sitting in in a family room, just watching, you know, watch TV. My wife comes in. At the time, it wasn't my wife. My girlfriend. We're like seven, eighteen at the time. Like just pale face, just like kind of shaky like what's what's wrong she's like i was just falling asleep and just in the moment i was about to fall asleep i heard the loudest scream in my head just a scream like she's like i was still awake but i wasn't it was just like someone was in my head screaming so loud it was like a scream i couldn't hear before i'm like okay weird didn't think much about it all week i'm feeling like something's around me right again i'm being silly come on it's just it's just a silly thing until a few days later, I'm I, I, I'm asleep and I wake up in the morning. But I wake up not fully awake. But I look up at me and there's there's this floating face looking at me. Okay, holy shit! The whole room was like um, misty. Okay, the weirdest thing is I can look around. I saw my wife laying laying there again. My girlfriend. Yeah, we were naughty. We slept together before we were married. <laughs> look over at her. I looked all over in the room. I could like I could even see the um like the time of day it was like probably seven a.m. or whatever the time the, the sun and everything. However, I was I other than being able to kind of move my head slightly to look, I, my my body was completely paralyzed. And there was just this face, kind of curiously looking at my face. Okay, no emotion though, no emotion, but just kind of like floating around. And it was just and it was just like a ghostly white transparent mist that filled the entire room. It was, and I literally was like, you know, trying to, trying to wake up, trying to wake up, trying to wake up. It was just looking at me until finally I wake up and I woke up, open my eyes. Everything looks like exactly the same, except that thing's not there anymore. Honestly, one of the most terrifying, terrifying moments of my life. So anyways, fast forward to the next weekend, uh, our friends go to play this again because we didn't learn our lesson. And then, you know, this thing starts saying to me, um, did you see me? I'm like, what the fuck? I appreciate it. This is great. You know, I really, I'm really glad that you want to kind of be around me <laughs> whatever. but i'm really scared um i, I kind of need i need you to back off kind of thing and it did i never had an experience after that and i bet you never touched a ouija board after that um reluctantly i think maybe once or twice but honestly that was a terrifying experience it really was so on a similar topic i've had my own paranormal experience but it's not anything like yours marcio oh really do tell russ <laughs> I know you're excited. You're totally on the edge of your yeah. seat. And I, I mentioned this in an episode way, 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 way back. But it involves, as most stories do, Twitter. 
<laughs> so I was watching this really, really terrible paranormal show on Netflix. I think it was Canadian. <laughs> Shut up. And I, yeah. <laughs> and I tweeted something snarky about it. Can't really remember what, what it was. But the host saw the tweet and thought I was being sincere. Because I guess it, was, it was, must have been the kind of comment that could have been taken. Like, this is the best show ever? Like that. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't quite that. I, can't, I honestly can't remember what the tweet was, and I'm not going to scroll all the way back and find it. But she thought I was being sincere and liked the tweet, and I'm pretty sure she tweeted me back as well and retweeted it. And I was just like, "Oh no, oh, oh no!" And I felt terrible You're because a she's obviously just doing her job. But it was such a bad show. I mean, the editing, the acting, everything about it was just so over the top. Yeah. And like, I love, I love bad TV. Like. So yeah, that's something I really Sometimes enjoy is great. TV that's just so terrible. Um, and I really should go back and watch it again because it really made me laugh so much. Well, I watch all the, I watch like those terrible. paranormal shows, um, like the ones where it reenacts, um, like it's like a docudrama, I guess, that reenacts those, um, yeah, yeah, like yeah. St- ghost stories, kind of like what I, you know, what I just told you there. Maybe you can get them to reenact that, right? And some of them are actually really well done. But most of them, some of them are. Yeah, but most of them, um, I watch it for the vibe. That, you know, it's quite the music. The quite it actually, some people. I know it's supposed to scary, but it actually really relaxes me. I find I just like get relaxed watching these. Some of them are actually like really well done, where it's actually quite freaks me out. But most of them are just like really have really bad acting, really bad cinematography. Oh, yeah. Everything's just so bad yeah. that I find myself laughing so hard at it. It's just amazing. <laughs> But anyways, you'll have to remind me of uh, of this show when you find it so I can uh, never watch it or watch it when I want to laugh. Yeah, will do. <laughs> will do. And with that, uh, here's another Halloween-themed game of Two Truths and a Lie with Third Eye Blind and XEB guitarist Kevin Cadigan. I'm going to list three things that I may or may not have dressed up as, and then you are going to get... Okay. So, okay. Dumbledore... Um, a Neumann U57 microphone okay. and Darth Vader. Oh, this is a very, okay. he's, he's, this is, okay. this is tough. This is tough. Now, I do Extra recall tough. when we did 20 questions with you, you did pick Star Trek over Star Wars. So I'm going to discount oh. Darth Vader for right now. He's, he's, he's moved to the side. He may come back. Dumbledore, I can kind of, I don't know if I can see that. I think you definitely dress up like a microphone, and you and you are so specific about the brand and model that I just I would I would be shocked if that were a lie. So I'm going to say that uh, one's true. But he might be trying to throw us you off. You think because the two are just characters, and then this is like because sometimes you know when someone's lying, they go a bit too specific. They overcompensate. No, no, I don't so, think he's. No, that's no. true. I don't no. know. I mean, Dumbledore. I'm having some problems with. Why? I just can't see you as Dumbledore. I'm, you know, right now I'm looking at you and I'm picturing gray hair, picturing a beard. I'm just, uh, look at his stone cold face, eh? He's just got like, I know. he's not given anything. <laughs> that's a typical, this total poker face here. Yeah. No kidding. I'm watching you guys. I like this suffering that I see. It's a- oh. Most of our guests do. Yeah. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm, <laughs> I think- I'm just going to go on a limb and say that you, dre- you did dress like a microphone <laughs> and that you did dress mm. as <sighs> Dumbledore. Uh, see, this is the thing, right? I sort of feel like Darth Vader is an, is, an, is an easy one. Like, people would dress up as Darth Vader. But I don't think you like Star Wars enough to dress up as Darth Vader. I'm going to say you didn't dress Just up as Dumbledore. Just because he picked Star Trek, that doesn't That's mean he doesn't. He can like both you. Well, I, I know. He can but like both. It's allowed. I know. I know. But I'm going to say he didn't dress up as Dumbledore. You're going to say Dumbledore. I'm going to say you didn't dress up as Darth Vader. Okay. So why do I feel like you're gonna say the microphone is the false? <laughs> Let's have it. Well, Ross, you uh, were wrong in this instance. Damn it! Yes. Okay, so I did do Dumbledore, and I think I froze in my odd by video. Yeah, you right, did. Um, right at the point. Okay, that's too bad. No, you're back. You're back. You're good. You're good now. Okay. We're good. Um, um, and I did. I did. I did not. I did dress up as Dumbledore. I did not dress up as Darth Vader or a Neumann microphone. <laughs> oh, so you did not. So you did the, you you did this opposite for us. So you did were two lies and a truth. 
Wait, was I supposed to do one truth and two? Oh, <laughs> fuck do it. two truths okay. alive, who gives a shit? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, the point is, I was somewhat right because I guess that you that you did dress up as Dumbledore. You know, I'll tell you what, it's true because Darth Vader. I, when I was nine years old, I think I dressed up as Darth Vader. So there you go. That's a okay, truth. So basically, Dumbledore we're both was equally wrong. The lie, the lie was the Neumann. Oh, I felt. Oh, I see. felt like I know. I know like after I said this it. Year, Maybe this year I'll do it. Maybe this year after you will. I, after I said it, and after we were done, I was like, you know what? He totally didn't dress up like the microphone. I know. I knew it guys, after, you know? I was thinking about it because you guys have these giant microphones. Oh, and I'm like, so you know, beautiful. I got my microphone here. Oh, is that your vocal mic? Yeah, guys, I was... When, uh, when do we all get sponsorships? Because I really checking, want sponsorships. <laughs> checking my compression settings in the studio. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Well, Ross, big mic here. No surprise Three here, guys, Ross. Three big mics. You should have just held that the whole time. Even if it wasn't the mic you're using, you should have just been like, <laughs> yeah, but then it's more not expensive a, than yours. We're not a great advertisement for the microphone if we're not actually using the audio. It's not even a microphone. Microphone. It's like Aventone. <laughs> <laughs> well, so why dress it up as an Aventone? You know, it's like, no, it's an Aventone. It's a great knockoff <laughs> of a C, whatever. <laughs> well, in conclusion... Ross, you and I are both losers. No I am a loser. You are a loser too, but less of a loser than me in this instance. I uh, like have that on sure. recording. Thank you, Ross. Your guys' I mics are that. fatter. Mine's longer. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Marcio, he got us too. <sighs> I mean, that's two for two now, man. On the losing end here. You What's know? happening to us? I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> so... <laughs> What we learned on this B-Sides episode, Marcio and I are both losers, Marcio's <laughs> had some paranormal experiences, and Ross loves watching and occasionally tweeting about bad paranormal shows on TV. <laughs> You're welcome. And I think, you know, with that, you've learned so much stuff today that there's uh, probably no better place to wrap up, right? <laughs> this might have been one of our most pointless episodes ever. <laughs> It's a special. But, Specials but I, don't have to be pointed. But I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I think we should wrap up. I think that's for the best. We hope you've enjoyed this spooky Halloween episode. <laughs> and that it was a treat rather than a trick. See what I did there? See? See? I see what you did there. I, I, <laughs> ha ha ha. Oh my ha, god. Ha. Oh my god. Well, if you enjoyed that and you want more... And why wouldn't you? You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, and YouTube. Don't forget to visit our website and pick up one of our shirts while you're there. As for me, I'm working on my second solo album, and you can pre-order it at marcinavelli.com slash pre-order. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify, which are all my name, Marcia Novelli. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, neither do I. Uh, I wasn't going to mention it, but you did anyway. You did anyway. And I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work at electrickiwi.co.uk. you can find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by 30 Roses, a virtual assistant and consultant to musicians and other creatives, as well as Music Entrepreneur HQ and Social Surge. All links are in the show notes, so please check them out because... What do they do, Ross? It's Halloween, they remember? Keep the show alive! Ooh, or else it would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and if you would like to sponsor the show, and again, why wouldn't you, visit patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. We recently updated the rewards, which now include sponsorship at the start of our interviews, as well as an opportunity for you to co-host an episode. Uh, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and iTunes so you don't miss any episodes, and leave us a comment, and let us know what you think of the show. Please. Yes. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> All right. So that's it for our Halloween special. Uh, we'll be back next week with a brand new interview. And remember, the truth is out there.